بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله I begin with the name of Allah All praise belongs to Allah And may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad for he is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam This is the next proverb in the book of Proverbs Kitab al-Hikam by Ibn Atta'ila May Allah Ta'ala shower him with mercy He says Nothing benefits the heart like seclusion by which it enters the courtyard of contemplation. Alhamdulillah. So what are we talking about? Seclusion. Here it's called uzla. Seclusion, some people say khalwa, a spiritual retreat. What does this mean? Human beings, we are inherently social creatures. By our very nature, we must interact with other people. That's just how it works. That's how we get along. We visit our neighbors. We visit our families. We talk to our co-workers. We talk about the weather. We talk about sports. That's what we do as human beings. All of this is part of life. Alhamdulillah. But with that said, constantly socializing with people, day and night, it leaves very little time for us to think about what is this life really about? What is the purpose of this world? What is my role in this world? When I leave this world, will the creator of this world be pleased with what I've done here? These are questions that many people don't ask themselves because they get caught up in the rigmarole of life, the distractions, the celebrity news, the sports events, the new movie. All of this is a distraction from the very important questions that people don't ask themselves. What am I doing here? What am I supposed to be doing here? And when I leave here, will my Lord be pleased with what I've done here? Ideally, as a Muslim, your five prayers should sort of interrupt this distraction of life. Ideally. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. These are five times in the day when we should think beyond the creation and think about the Creator. But at this stage, the practicing Muslim, he still lacks the spiritual attention, the attentiveness to break through these distractions. Even when he prays, he's still thinking about the creation. Despite the fact he's praising the Creator, he's still thinking about the creation. So what do we do with this? This is what we do. Ibn Atta'ila says, you have to go on a spiritual retreat, on a khalwa, or he calls it a uzla, a spiritual retreat, so that you can contemplate about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we do this? Huh? We're all busy. We got lives to live. We got school. We got jobs. We got families. How do we find time to take a spiritual retreat? This is what you do. This is your homework. Once a week, Take 40 minutes out of your day. Go find some place. Usually I find this works best when it comes to nature. Find you a nice park. If you live near a river, maybe if you're lucky enough to live by the mountains, go find a nice isolated place in nature where you can see greenery, whatever it is in nature that's around you. 40 minutes out of every week. This is what you're going to do. We are going to think about four attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty. What are these four attributes? The first one is that Allah is beginningless. He has no beginning. Second one, Allah is endless. He has no end. Third one, Allah is self-subsistent. He doesn't need anything. Fourth one, Allah is one. Allah is beginningless. Allah is endless. Allah is self-subsistent. He doesn't need anything. And Allah is one. What are we going to do with this? I want you to contemplate about each of these attributes for 10 minutes at a time. You're going to look at the creation. Let's say you are walking through a park for 10 minutes. As you look at the trees, you're going to say to yourself, these trees have a beginning. All of these trees in front of me, they have a beginning. At some point, these trees were all saplings. 
They were all little plants that grew up to be trees. They have a beginning. There was a time in the past when these trees were not here. Hmm? Or maybe, let's say, you are sitting on a bench by a river. The river is going down and it looks so nice and sparkly. This river has a beginning. It's been here for quite a long time, hasn't it? Maybe before you were even alive. But this river has a beginning. At some point, there was no river here. It was just a dry batch of land. And then, due to the erosion of the land, started raining, certain changes in the elements. Now it's a river. A few centuries ago, this river was not here. This river has a beginning. Let's say you look off in the distance and there's a bridge. That's a nice bridge. Cars are driving over the bridge. That bridge has a beginning as well. Maybe it's 50 years old, 60 years old. It has a beginning. Everything in creation has a beginning. Allah, the creator, has no beginning. Think about this for 10 minutes. Everything has a beginning except Allah. The sun, the moon, the sky, the clouds, even yourself. Even yourself. I was born out of a mother and a father. My mother and father, they met each other. They knew each other in the biblical sense, as they say. And I was conceived. There was a point in time when I wasn't here. I have a beginning. My parents, they have beginnings. The parents of my parents have beginnings. Keep on going. Every generation before me had a beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no beginning. Think about this for 10 minutes. Then, for 10 more minutes, everything around you has an ending. Those trees that you were just looking at, they have an ending. They're not going to be here forever. Something will happen. There will be some type of fire, or maybe someone will come and decide to build a building here. They chop down the trees, those trees are long gone. These trees have an ending. That river that you were just admiring, it has an ending as well. The world is always changing. Within a few centuries, that river may dry up. There is no river. That bridge. One day, a civil engineer will pass by and say this bridge is no longer usable. We have to demolish it. That bridge has an ending as well. The sun, it has an ending. The sun has been around for 4 billion years, as they say. It probably won't be around in 4 billion years. The sun has an ending. Everything has an ending. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no ending. He has no ending. He has no beginning. He has no ending. You think about this for 10 minutes. 10 minutes beginningless, 10 minutes endless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no beginning, has no end. 10 more minutes, what do you think about? Allah ta'ala is self-subsistent. He doesn't need anything. Everything we just talked about, they have needs. The tree, the tree that you were just looking at, it has needs, doesn't it? It needs water to survive. It needs sunshine to survive. If the earth that it's standing on is too unstable, it will topple over. It has to be on stable ground in order to grow into a tree. This tree has a lot of needs. Likewise, that bridge that you were looking at, that bridge needs to be maintained. Every so often, someone has to come and clean it. If it's made out of metal, someone has to clean the metal, otherwise it'll rust over and it won't be usable anymore. This bridge needs to be maintained. It has needs. Someone needs to maintain it, otherwise it will collapse on itself. Everything in creation is like this. Everything has needs. You, you as a human being, you have needs, don't you? You need to eat food, drink water, get some sleep. If it's cold outside, you need extra layers of clothing. You need love and affection. You need all these things, you see. Everything in creation has needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no needs. The creator has no needs. He existed when nothing else existed. He was perfect by himself. He didn't need anything. So when he created things, it would be inconceivable that now he needs these things that he created. He existed 
before anything else existed and he was perfectly fine. Why would he need things now? Hmm? He needed nothing back then. He needs nothing now. He will need nothing for always. Rather, me and you, we need things. Allah is self-subsistent. He doesn't need anything. Think about that for 10 minutes. And the last 10 minutes of this 40-minute self-retreat, Allah is one. What does that mean? Everything in creation is mired in multiplicity. That tree that you were just looking at, that is one tree. There are millions of trees in the world. Billions, maybe? Allah Ta'ala knows best. That tree, there's so many of them. There's so many trees. That bridge that you were just looking at, there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of bridges in the world. That bridge is not unique. There's many other bridges just like it. That river, there are many rivers in the world. You think this is the only river in the world? There are many rivers. This is just one of them. The sun. Uh, there's only one sun, isn't there? That's not true. There are many suns. They are called stars. Billions and billions of stars that exist. The sun is nice, you see, but there's many other suns out there in the universe. Everything in creation is like this. Multiplicity. You find one thing, there's many other examples of it. As for the creator, there's only one creator. You are not going to find another creator who creates things from nothingness. There is only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty. So observe the things around you for 10 minutes and realize that everything you see in creation, there are many versions of it. There is only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is utterly unique. Nothing else can say that it is utterly unique. There are many examples of everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is your spiritual retreat. 40 minutes once a week. And I'm telling you from experience, this is not theory. This is not something I read in a book. This is something I have lived and tasted myself. If you do this for a few weeks, few months, your life will change. There's not many things in this life you can guarantee. I can guarantee you this. If you do this 40 minute session once a week for about three or four months, you will find that you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much more frequently than you did before. God will no longer be some abstraction, some thing that lives far away. No. All of a sudden, I'm thinking about God on a regular basis. Randomly, walking down the street, God comes to mind now. He's no longer someone that I call upon when I need something once in a, in a few years, you see. I'm in an emergency, God help me. All of a sudden, you start thinking about God much more frequently than you did in the past. The things that you stressed about in the past no longer seem so stressful. Because this thing that I'm stressing over has a beginning, it surely has an end. Allah has no beginning, Allah has no end. These new trends and fads that pop up every so often, dress like this, buy this new electronic device, go to this new vacation spot, they're not going to be as thrilling as they used to be. Because you're going to look at them and say, that vacation, there's millions of other types of vacations. That device that's new now, there are many other devices just like it. These things are not really unique. They're not really that special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique. Allah ta'ala is very special, you see. If you do this 40-minute session, this spiritual seclusion, this uzla, this khalwa, you will find that your relationship with Allah ta'ala, God Almighty, will be much more tangible than it has ever been. Alhamdulillah. Take it from me. But better than taking it from me, do it. Experience it yourself, and you will find that uh, words can't really describe this. May Allah Ta'ala guide us to him. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yamal qiyamati wa salam tasliman kathirah.